Welcome to Talon 4. And welcome to the Wii version of Metroid Prime. The main difference is most obvious that we're using the Wii Remote to aim around instead of using the GameCube control to t turn like a tank. And there are a few other differences, but we'll get to those in a little while. Hunter class gunship registered to Samus Aaron. You can return to your ship to recharge energy, reload weapons, and save progress in the game. We also activate our visor by holding down the minus button. Other big differences are doors open much faster because areas are loading much faster, and the textures are all just a little bit sharper and cleaner. Oh, if only we had the morph ball. Oh, these things are moving, which means we can scan them. Species. Blast cap. Volatile chemicals within this weed's toxic fungal cap may explode if agitated. The poisonous flesh of the blast cap helps keep it from being eaten. It also detonates its fungal cap when it senses even slight contact. This place is so, so beautiful. It's such a great uh, place to start the real game. It's just dripping in atmosphere in exactly the same way that Super Metroid was. This lichen is giving off low levels of radiation, as yet unknown. Apparently it's not that dangerous since we can rub our face up against it and probably not suffer any ill effects. Morphology, seedling, plant-based ground feeder. Dorsal spines can be ejected in self-defense. Those dorsal spines have the greatest accuracy. And these pickups are far away, but I'll just use my charge bit. Oh, of course. I have to jump instead like a barbarian. What is this stuff I am getting caught up in? Hang on. Species, Tangleweed. Plant life with basic sentience. Retracts into the ground if threatened. Tangleweeds are only dangerous to small organisms. They are covered in tiny barbs designed to trap potential meals. Tangleweeds lack the strength to do anything more than hinder larger life forms. You win this round, Tangleweed. This must be the crater that was mentioned on the frigate. That looks like a long drop down. The frigate mentioned that the radiation readings are perfectly normal, so it should be fine for us to go investigate. Or perhaps not. There is a blast shield on the door blocking access. Analysis indicates that the blast shield is invulnerable to beam weapons. Explosive weapons may damage it. Log 10.308.0 Field team reports are in on an aged structure of alien design built on the surface of Talon 4. Studies show this structure projects a containment field. This field bars access to a prime source of energy within a deep crater. Science team believes the field is powered by a number of strange Chozo artifacts. Studies for possible resting places for these talismans have begun. As the field could hinder future energy production operations on Talon 4, we must dismantle it as soon as possible. If this means the destruction of the Chozo artifacts, it will be done. Well, I guess if the Chozo were on this planet, then that means everything's fine. It's not like the Chozo ever made anything bad. Except the Metroids. And Mother Brain. I mean, aside from those ones.
Morphology, beetle, burrowing insect with a resilient carapace, extremely aggressive. Insect's massive mouth enables it to tunnel through solid rock at high speeds. Above ground, beetles can cover short distances rapidly. They attack anything that moves near their lair. I'm not sure if the Saturnine mushrooms are supposed to glow blue like that or if that's also the radiation. Morphology. Sapsack. Chemical reaction within sac produces violent explosion when agitated. Because of its irresistible odor and sweet nectar, the sap sac was nearly eaten out of existence. The evolution of an explosive chemical sac saved it. Now, only brave or ingenious creatures dare to devour it. Morphology. Zoomer. Anchors itself to walls and other surfaces. Avoid contact with spikes. A basic nerve center located directly above the zoomer's mandibles detect nutrients. Sharp spines protect it from casual predators, but a lack of a reinforced carapace makes the zoomer vulnerable to any indirect attacks. Morphology, Gemer. Wall crawling mollusk with retractable spikes. The Gemer is an evolutionary offshoot of the zoomer family. When threatened, it extends lethal spikes and retracts its head deep into its armored carapace. Everything on this planet is so violent. Oh, hold on a second. Yeah, look at those visor effects. This game looks amazing. Morphologia flor sanguinea. Puede expulsar esporas tóxicas. Sus toxinas son venenosas inclusive a la misma flor sanguínea. Tres nódulos vocales sobresalen del tallo bajo la flor, cada uno con un racimo cerebral rudimentario y la habilidad de vomitar humo tóxico a cualquier cosa dentro de un radio de 5 metros. Las esporas expulsadas del estigma en el centro de la flor son suficientes para matar a esta criatura si explotan en su alrededor. Ah, if only we had the missiles. All of my attempts to explore thus far have been all for naught. Guess there's nothing we can do but go down this way. It's like we're being funneled into a certain direction. Large energy replenishes 20 units of energy. Ah, uh, good. The Chozo Ruins. That probably means good things for us. There's no way to tell how old these pillars are. Judging by the state of everything else in this area though, it would suffice to say that whatever is here is dead and has been dead for a long time. The history of the Chozo stretches into ancient times, so far into the fog of the past that we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however, the Chozo who colonized Talon IV made a conscious choice to eschew a civilization of advanced technology. They chose to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. As this city grows, we plan to honor them with written tributes, carvings etched in stone to remind us always of their legacy.
That sounds nice. That probably means that things went really well for the Chozo in this place. As you can see, using the Wii Remote to aim uh, is really good for crowd control, at least on slower moving enemies. Ah, power up. That sounds like a good place to start. We'll go up from here and collect that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Morphology. Scarab. Exploding parasites that can embed their bodies in solid rock. Scarabs think nothing for themselves for the safety of their swarm. When a hostile life form is sighted, they block its progress by embedding themselves in floors and walls. Embedded scarabs violently self-destruct when threatened. Everything on this planet is so aggressive and violent and explosive. Why doesn't anything just, you know, exist peacefully? Structure, War Wasp Hive. Primary War Wasp dwelling, only vulnerable to heavy weaponry. War Wasps build their homes out of existing crevices, using whatever materials are close at hand. They carry building fragments back to the construction site with their forelegs, and glue them into place with adhesive secreted from their abdomens. Like I said, why isn't anything in this planet just existing peacefully? Even those birds were probably going to attack us at some point. Self-defense. This tree is decomposing just from pure age. It's quite impressive though. If nothing else, scarabs are a really good source of uh, pickups. Morphology, ion. Immobile organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue. Capable of launching sustained energy beams when active, the ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. We can't kill them though, and they will open their eyes eventually, so we do want to get a move on in these corridors. That tree is also decomposing. However, it's decomposing because of a poisoned water source somewhere near the base. Many long years have passed since we chose a first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other, unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with visions of the past and future. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps, finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us. The Wii Remote is also really good at picking off enemies from a distance in a shooting gallery fashion. This pool used to contain water, but it's all dried up now. And assuming that these aren't just carvings, without water, the ions are dead. They are just stone. Morphology, War Wasp. Airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The War Wasp rarely strays far from its hive, lest it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival, dive-bombing its enemy with stinger extended. 
Fast-working toxins from the stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. War wasps are going to be a particular nuisance throughout the Chozo Ruins. If only we could destroy their hives. Morphology. Plasmite. Small insect capable of storing and releasing thermal energy. Plasmites are attracted to sources of heat, thriving on the energy presence there. They emit light when hunting and will expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. That seems somewhat unnecessary. They were just making the area prettier and possibly going to try and suck our energy or something. This water is so poisonous, it's actually toxic. What a nice, big, arena-looking room. And over there is a power-up. Finally, something we can actually get to. Well, that's the Chozo for you. Mechanoid. Hive Mecha. Security unit programmed to work with predatory hive dwellers. A design flaw makes the shielding on Hive Mecha weak around their access ports. These units are second generation combat drones able to interface with organic units at a higher level. They train, shelter, and work with Hive dwelling predators. Unarmed, they rely solely on their Hive Beasts to handle any threats. These Hive Beasts are also being kind of weird. They're not really acting like the War Wasps did earlier. And that's because they're not just War Wasps. Morphology, Ram War Wasp, airborne predator, circles its prey and then strikes. The War Wasps are the only species on Talonford to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in damp, dark places, Ram War Wasps emerge in small groups when threatened and circle their enemy at high speeds, disorienting it. Striking from all sides as a single intelligence, they can fell huge organisms. The Hive Mecha fight is a pretty good illustration of how the Wii controls aren't inherently superior to the GameCube version. After all, the GameCube version was designed knowing that Samus was going to control the way she does on the GameCube, and all the enemies were designed that way as well. They expect you to be locking on and not really worrying about aiming so much, whereas aiming is kind of a lot of what you have to do with the pointer. There is an, actually an option in the Wii version to turn off free aim when you are locked onto something so that it basically acts like the GameCube version when you are locked onto something. I generally think the Wii version is a bit more playable anyway and I'm fine with the slight difficulty uh, with free aim than having to constantly switch back and forth. This third phase is actually easier than the second because you can just kind of mash the fire button and hit most of the war wasps as they emerge from the hive mecha in the beginning. Yeah, now we're talking. Let's blow some stuff up. Bam. And if that wasn't enough, we also get... 
first energy tank. That'll make things a lot uh, easier. So we don't accidentally die from something. Missile ammunition resupplies missile launcher with five rounds of ammo. Oh man, it's a good thing that just fell down, or else we would have been stuck here forever. That's really convenient, even. Now that we have the missiles, we can actually destroy the war wasp hives. Usually war wasps will emerge before we get the chance to destroy it anyway, so all it really does is give us a few more pickups, usually, which we can't even get to at the moment. The missiles destroy objects made from radion and brimstone, and that coincidentally is what that cracked wall is made of, one of those two materials. Also, it's a cracked wall, why wouldn't you shoot a missile at it? How useful could the map really be? We've already explored quite a significant portion of these ruins. It's not like it could be that big. Oh my. Well, looks like we've got a lot ahead of us. I get the feeling we'll be here a little while. We'll worry about that another time. For now, we can focus on the cool things, like how the missiles open up quite a few uh, of the pathways that we've seen so far. There were also war wasps in this room, uh, but I don't really need to fight them. We'll just come over here and save our game and tackle some of those missile doors next time. <laughs>